Okay, now getting back to where we were before. Uh, I have, I'm going to start up SPSS. Oh, boy, there it is. It's working now. How exciting. I'm going to start up SPSS. I'll edit all of this out so it looked like everything ran smoothly here when the uh, administration looks in on it. They, won't, they don't know anything went wrong at all here. Actually, I, I, I usually don't even bother to edit this stuff. So, Okay, so here is, uh, as I said before, if you look down here, there's, at the bottom here, there's a, a couple of tabs, data view and variable view. There's actually another way for me to get to this also. Up here at view, if I click on view, if I go down here, notice it says data. If I click on that, it switches me to the data view. If I go back to view, it says variable now. So it switches back to variable. So I'm going to start in the data view. Okay, and the data view, it has rows, numbered rows. Those rows represent subjects, people, uh, experimental results. Each one is each one a test or a measurement or something like that, or a person or a patient. The columns represent variables. This column might represent gender. This column might represent age. This column might re represent blood pressure. This column might represent height and so on. Now, these cells that are in here, they represent the values for this person, person number one, subject number one. What is his gender? What is his age? What is his... Uh, so on and so forth, right? Going across here, each one of the columns represents that. You don't do any calculations in these cells. You don't do any manipulation in these cells. Uh, you can add data in the cells. If you wanted to, I could go right in here and put in a number 45 and 47 and uh, 54, whatever. I could actually stuff put stuff in there. Notice it doesn't have a variable name. I didn't tell if it was gender or age or anything like this. So it recreated a name for that variable called VAR0001, right? It gave it a name in the absence of one that I would give it. So now I can go over to the variable view, and the variable view lists for each column, I have a row. So the first row was that variable I just created. And I can describe the values in that variable. Yes? You know, I really can't enlarge this because... It's just, yeah, you know, because unfortunately, all, you know, almost all the applications on the Mac, you can you can spread spread out and, and uh, uh, increase their size, you know, blow them up. SPSS doesn't support that, unfortunately. I mean, it's kind of a little bit of a relic of a program. OK, but it's going to do what we need it to do very well. So if you have that downloaded to your computer, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to I'm, I'm going to go back to the data view. I'm not going to use this file. I can't close it. If I close it it's, and, and, and put it away without sa or saving it or without saving it, SPSS will quit. It always needs a file open, a window open. I'm instead going to go just up to file, say open, data, and I'm going to go search for a data file. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go to my desktop. Uh, to get to my desktop, I'm going to click here. I'm going to say, oh, okay, let's go up to Tony DeVito's desktop. You might have to navigate a little bit more carefully on these computers to get to the desktop that you're working with. Okay, so here's the desktop, and now I'm gonna find that file that I saved here, that Excel file. You guys see it there? I don't see it there, do you? What's that? Bingo, exactly right. If I click on, what's happening here is only looking for SPSS data files. They have the postscript.sav. Now what I can do is click on the file type and I can tell it what kind of file I'm looking for. So now if I click Excel, it'll show me the Excel files that are present, right? And you'll see there's a bunch of Excel files present. The one I want is this one over here, Descriptive Statistics. Uh, I'm not gonna open it for the moment because I'm gonna also show you, you have any number of other kinds of files that you can import and open here, including SAS, uh, DBase, uh, Lotus, which is an old spreadsheet thing, uh, 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 so on and so forth, CSV files, comma delimited files, okay? Um, uh, or you can go down to all files. It'll show all the files on your on, on my desktop, right? There's a lot of detritus on my desktop. So I'm going to go back there at all files. I'm going to open up this one file, Descriptive Statistics, Exercise 1, Excel to SPSS. The reason why I called it Excel to SPSS is because I happen to have the same data as the one we were working with on Excel, but I have it formatted so there's not a lot of other stuff on there. It'll import easily to SPSS. I'm going to say open. 
When I say open, it's going to give me a dialog box. Okay. And in that dialog box, read Excel file. Hmm. I didn't expect to see this. That's not what I want. Let me try this again. Open data. Uh, let me just go to Excel. Why is it giving me final data based on the prison? I shouldn't be seeing this. Okay, worksheet from I have this these data between A1 and A18, which is what I'm after. Okay. Oh, you know what it is? This is a new version of Excel. Um, uh, uh, I this version of Excel, this window looks a little bit different. It's got all the same stuff, but it looks a little bit different. Okay, here's the file I'm opening, Excel Descriptive Statistics Exercise 1. It says there's data between A1 and A18. That's the numbers that we had in that file, right? Makes sense. And then there's a little box right below here. Read variable name from the first row of data. It's going to open it very often in Excel. You might make that first name, that first row, the name of the variable. Age, first name, last name, that kind of thing. In this case, did we have anything on that first row? The only thing we had on the first row was data, right? So if I click that, it's going to try and use that number as the variable name, and it's going to only import 17 numbers instead of 18. So I have to click this to let it know. To not, I have to unclick it to let it know not to read the variable name from the first row. And then I'm going to click OK, and it's going to import this data into SPSS. Uh, it, it should fill it in automatically. It sees the data between A1 and A18. Now let's say that you had... Let's say that you had data going, that you had like four columns, A1 through A18, and then like might be blood pressure, A, uh, B1 through a B18 might be uh, height, and so on and so forth, and you only want to import the height, you could tell it to import the data that's in the range on this data sheet from B1 to B18, only import that group of cells. In this case, that's the only place it saw data, and that's what it put up there. Okay, so here's the numbers that we were working with before right here, right? So if I go into my variable, notice it put the it put V1 as the variable name because we didn't tell it what the name of the variable. So I'm going to go into variable view, and here is that, that column represented by the variable. Now I'm going to give it a name, a variable name, and I'm going to call it uh, BP for blood pressure. What are the rules for naming variables at SPSS? The rule is it's got to start with a letter. Can't have any spaces in it. Can have numbers, letters, but no spaces and no special characters. Okay, so it could be BP uh, BP two three four for maybe that's like uh, uh, stuff that was. Uh, 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 I, I better yet, let me try. What's today's date? Oh six, oh five. Right, blood pressure measurements on oh six oh five could be the variable name. But, you know, a lot of times the variable names, because we can't use spaces, we can't use special characters, it's hard to make them very descriptive, right? In other words, they're not exactly the kind of thing that you would want printing out on a chart or a table that you might want to use somewhere else. You would prefer to be able to make, give it a more descriptive uh, English-like uh, label, right? So we actually have a column here called label. And in that column called label, I can actually type in a better description. Uh, blood pressure, pressure, um, um, uh, white males. Okay, I can, I can create a label that when it prints out on the tables of graphs, it will use the label instead of using the variable name. Uh, under the column says label, right? Right there, the column says label. Now I can tell it. What, how, many, how many characters, how many numbers are in there. So the width should be more than one, right? The width should be, uh, oh, what it was, it was three, right? Uh, you can make it four or five. And it, it recognized that the biggest number was only three digits, so only a lot of three digits. Uh, there weren't any numbers with decimals, so put zero if you want. You could put your own, you put anything you want in there. Values is reserved for something special. Values is reserved for when we're putting in a number that's going to represent a nominal value, a, 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 a categorical variable. For instance, if we were going to, if this were gender and we were going to put in one for male and two for female, 
The value is where we would tell it the number one represents male and number two represents female. This is a numerical variable, so I'm not going to bother with that. Uh, you can tell it what to do with missing values. It automatically just ignores missing values. So if you don't want to deal with that, you can just ignore that for now. But if you want to do special stuff, like in other words, code a, a variable that's missing because um, uh, uh, it was incorrectly measured as 99. You could tell it 99 represents uh, uh, an incorrectly gathered information or 98 represents the person died before you could read it or something like that, before you could ask them or something. You could code what the missing data means or how to handle the missing data. Uh, number of columns for each row in the display you could give it. You could tell it whether a line right or left. And down here by measure, this is probably the most important column. That's where you tell it what kind of data it is. You have three choices, scalar, numerical, in other words, or uh, ordinal, you know, ordered, or nominal, which is a name. So this is numbers. So I'm going to call it scalar. It uses the term scalar instead of numerical in SPSS. Those are your three choices. Why is that important? Because certain kind of calculations we're going to do make sense for numerical variables but don't make sense for nominal variables, right? Gender is a nominal variable. Does it make sense to find an average for gender, right? No. What would that mean? person with one breast and one testicle, right? It make an average, average, the average male or female doesn't make any sense, right? So, but numerical variable, their weight or their BMI or something like that makes, uh, does make sense. So, so it's important we identify that this is why the variable type is important you know, to determine before you really go any further. That's an understanding of variable types important to us. Okay, so uh, now you see the variable name up there. Not the label, but the variable name that you've created. So now let's do our, calculate our descriptive statistics like we did for Excel. How do we do that? We go up to analyze. Almost everything you're going to do in terms of a calculation using Excel is going to go, is going to start with analyze. What kind of statistics is the mean, the standard deviation, the variance, and so on? Those are called descriptive statistics. They describe a sample or a population. I'm going to go to descriptive statistics. Now, frequencies, descriptive statistics, frequencies. Do you think we use frequencies for numerical variables? No, not probably not, because that would just tell us how many 95.2s we have, how many 78.9s we have. You really use that for categorical or nominal variables. How many males do we have? How many females do we have? How many redheads? How many blondes? How many brunettes? Those are frequencies, we would go in there when we're working with nominal data. We're working with numerical data. So I'm going to go to the next, which is called descriptives. I'm going to click on that. And a window is going to come up. Now, we're only working with one variable. I only gave you one variable, right? Blood pressure. Okay, so now normally you'd see a whole list of variables here with that whatever's in this data sheet would all be listed here, right? And you would have to choose which one do you want to analyze? Okay, in this case, there's only one. So I just moved that one into the box that says variables that we want to analyze. Uh, in options, you have a couple of options there. Calculate the mean, calculate standard deviation. Let's calculate the variance. Let's calculate the range. Why not? Right? So that's really the only things there that may be of interest to us. I'm going to click continue. And then finally, you can go to style and bootstrap if you want to play around with stuff, but you really don't need any of that stuff. I'm going to click OK. When I click OK, SPSS is going to open a new window. SPSS uses three kinds of windows. It uses a data window. It uses an output window, which is not open yet until I hit that OK. And it uses a syntax window. Syntax is a language, a programming language built into SPSS where you can give it instructions on how to handle data and then use those instructions over and over and over again, like a, uh, like a computer program. Analyze the data. Why might you use that? Well, you might have com data coming in daily that you had to organize, sort, uh, find descriptive statistics for, combine with other data. You might use synt the syntax uh, function in SPSS to write a program to do that for you. We're not going to worry about that. I'll show that to you every once in a while, but uh, you know, you're know you not going to be responsible for worrying about how to do this. So I'm going to click OK, and now an output window just opened up. Okay, And on one side, we have a navigation window for the output window. So if you can do a lot of analysis, you can go through this and, and uh, uh, combine and, and use the, the scroll window here 
to move up and down so you don't have to uh, scroll on the right side. It'll just jump to where you are. Sometimes you'll find you're doing 12 operations on here and it just makes it easier to find things. So what's our output? Well, our output is down here. I'm going to squeeze this up a little bit so you can see it a little bit better up there. Out there. Let's see. Uh, blood pressure, white males. Uh, as sample size is 18. The range is 20. Oh, I guess it's not blood pressure, right? 26 to 88. Uh, minimum is, uh, no, it could be 88. Maximum is 144. The mean is, looks familiar, that number, doesn't it? 99.94. Uh, 7.247 is standard deviation. Looks familiar. Variance, 52.56. Looks familiar. Now, this is an this was enormous, way more, way more uh, efficient than using Excel to do these calculations. Only problem is, this program can only do these statistical calculations. Not a general use program with Excel, like Excel has many, many other functions. Also, very hard for me to demonstrate to you where that number standard deviation came from. Here, where the Excel, we could see the actual calculation. Okay, so this table now may be useful to us in a report or something like that. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to open up Microsoft Word. You certainly could, except now imagine now that you have a data set with 500 numbers, right? And you have a column of 500 numbers, a little bit, a little bit unwieldy to use Excel for that. Plus, look how quickly I was able to do this. In moments, I was able to do what took me a while to calculate in Excel. Now, I can go into the output window. I'll click on it, highlight it. I can go over here to edit and say copy. You can also, you know, say uh, uh, control C, copy. And then I can go back over here to my Word document, type my report. Right? This is a nice report I'm writing in. <laughs> and, uh, a little of this. If only really this could be a report. right? Okay. And then I could paste my results. And now here's my table embedded into my report. I could also do charts, graphs, and so on and so forth. So now I have a tool that will do statistical calculations for me, store the data, organize the data for me, do statistical calculations, allow me to do all sorts of interesting stuff with statistics. Now, when I'm done, when I'm done, let me add something else I want to see. Edit. Yeah, okay. When I'm, when I'm done with this, I'm going to just close this. I'm not going to save it. As a matter of fact, let me do one other thing. Let me go into graphs, legacy dialog. Uh, what am I going to do here? Let's do a histogram. No, it's not, I, need two, I need two axes to do a scatter plot, right? I need two values for each person, right? Okay, I'm going to say blood pressure is my variable. I'm going to say okay. And I should be able to produce a simple histogram here. Yes, a histogram. Graph. Graph legacy dialogue. You know, I'm, I'm going through this very quickly. I don't expect you to, to you know, uh, when we leave here, be able to do all of this stuff yet. Maybe after the next session, you know, like assignment one may ask you to do some of this stuff, which will be, I'll post at the end of the, uh, Wednesday. Okay, so here it gives you the mean, it puts it up on the side there, and so on and so forth. So uh, uh, we have an opportunity to use this to create, and again, this I could also copy and paste this into a Word document as well. So when I'm done with this, right, if I close my data window, right, if I've made any changes or addition to my data window, I'll lose it, right? So these windows are all saved separately. You save your output window, .spo file, save your, your data set, dot um, uh, spv file dot sav file right you can save them all separately see now closing last data window will exit spss even though the output window is open right so if i click on that i'll lose the output window right i'll lose this the, the, the calculations that i've done so far well there's a couple of ways you could a couple of things you could do with this you could say save as and save it as a spss output window which is good if you're going to open it up again in spss but not so good if you want to send the data to someone else. You got a lot of other options that you can use also. You could say uh, ex, uh, ex, uh, export, and you could tell it to export it as a Word document, or RTF file, rich text file, right, instead. So you have all those graphs, all those tables 
in a Word document that you might be able to keep on your computer or use later on, right? So there's a number. Just keep in mind that these windows are all saved separately. They're separate windows, and if you want to preserve them, you got to you have to remember to save them separately. Uh, that's up to you. Right now, this is going to save in users slash Tony DeVito slash desktop with the name output dot dot doc. I could I could go over here and change this name, the output part. It'll save on my desktop, which whatever name I give it, JJJJJ. Or I can click on browse and the go and 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 navigate to another spot where I might want to save it. Okay, just like any other program. Okay, so that's SPSS. Not so intimidating, right? In fact, it's a lot of ways it's a lot simpler than Excel is because it's just got that very direct function that you're going to use it for. Okay, almost all of the Analyses you're going to do are under uh, are under the analyze function. Uh, uh, um, uh, all of the graphs that you might make are going to be under graphs. Things can get a little bit complicated when you want to start manipulating data, when you want to group data certain ways. When you want to let's say you want let's say that you want to you have a person's weight and height, or you have the weight weight and height for a bunch of subjects. You want to calculate BMI. Well, that's a simple formula, right? You have to do a calculation. You can then go over to transform, and you can say that I want to compute a new variable based on old variables, or I want to recreate a new variable based on uh, some other variables. And you can go in there, and you can create a new variable that you can base on logically and, uh, and uh, 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 by computing on some other data that's in here. You can filter the data in certain ways. You can do all sorts of other stuff. So there's a lot. This is a very complicated program. But for most of the stuff that we're doing, it's going to be even simpler than using Excel for most calculations. Okay? So I wouldn't get too intimidated. Remember I mentioned to you that there is a syntax file. If you look at this text that, that was executed up here before uh, I got my table, that is literally the way SPSS would, in its computer language, describe what I did by going up to analyze, descriptive statistics, descriptives, and then choosing the choosing the options that I chose. In other words, here, um, uh, get the data from, from this Excel file. Um, uh, there's the name of the file. That's where to find it, uh, so on and so forth. Now, go ahead and do that. Now, take that data set that's open right now and find the variables, uh, find the descriptive variables uh, for that. And I'm included in those descriptive variables. Tell me the mean, the standard deviation, variance, range, minimum, and maximum. So if I copy this part, it won't let me copy it. Well, let me go up. Oh, wait, I should be able to get into it. If I copy this part, right, and I go over here and I say open a new, a new syntax window. See if it opens it for me. Come on. Let me see it. Oh, there it is. And I paste this in here, and I tell it to go ahead and run this. It does exactly the same thing again. I think it did it. It gave me a warning. Undefined variable. Oh, you know, because I didn't copy the whole thing. It needed the top part, too. Let me see if I can. Yeah, hang on a second here. Let me go back to my window here. Okay, and let me run it now. Uh, it's not cooperating with me for some reason right now. Get execute data. Uh, did I not highlight it? Is that it? Okay. Up. Oh, that's I. I'm, I don't want to belabor this point, and you know, if it's not cooperating with me for one reason or another, I'll figure that out some other time. Okay, but that's that's my point is is that there's a syntax language that you could use to direct how this works rather than using the, the uh, drop menus. We're going to be fine using the built-in drop menus and 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 ta and uh, selections and so on and so forth in Windows uh, that we need. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to go over the syllabus now. The other thing I want to go over the other material that's on Blackboard. Save? No, I don't want to save that. Close this.
da, da, da. Will I say yes, no, don't save those changes. So I'm going to go back to Blackboard again. It works for you? Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, this my computer's just not cooperating today for some reason. Okay. You guys can play. Like, you're welcome to play around with this stuff as much as you want. We're going to use like a tiny 1% of the functionality of SPSS for, for what we're going to be doing. You guys are perfectly welcome to go into these programs, learn more about them, go online, go to YouTube. Look for tutorials on them and so on and so forth. In fact, I'll, as the semester goes on, I'll be posting some uh, links to some uh, what, what look like some uh, decent tutorials. I think there might even be some I've already put there already, but uh, definitely be adding to that as well. Okay, so I just want to go back here to uh, the lab, to the lab at the end here. Okay, so session one. Uh, at the bottom down here. There's a couple of videos down here. Uh, this is a, a lab similar to this one from a previous semester in case you want to get a different look at it. I've also put a couple of video links down here. One showing a, a really good demonstration of the power of statistics in, uh, 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 in um, uh, uh, the power of graphics in statistics, how, well, how you can use statistics to communicate uh, uh, graphics communicate very uh, elaborate statistical uh, 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 concepts. Okay, that's uh, by a fellow, uh, Dr. Hans Rosling, and it's uh, one, of a TED, one of a number of TED presentations that he's done. I may get a chance to play a little bit of it for you in a, in a bit. Um, 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 okay. And the other thing, let's go back to the lecture section here. This, has, this, is, a bunch, this, this is a bunch of videos that um, uh, I've extracted from some of the stuff that uh, Professor Weika and, and uh, uh, Professor Waldron have done with me. Some, some of this, some of this might be me. Most of it, uh, most of it in this session, I think, is uh, as uh, Professor Waldron. So, for instance, you know, he's got a, he might have a pretty good description of uh, 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 the uh, definitions of some of the terms that we're using. I'm going to turn the sound up on your game so you can hear it a little bit. Something more specific than like the math, which is American adults or even just. So, um, and we call that a census. So I would suggest you play these things. I've cut them down so that they're in smaller segments. Do we have any more handouts left? <laughs> do we have any more handouts left? See, not exactly, you know, high end, uh, high end uh, 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 editing, but. Uh, there's a lot of good information in a brief history of statistics. What what is biostatistics? Types of data. Again, he goes. You hear him go over his version of types of data. So you'll pick up uh, you know other things in here that I think will help you out. Um, uh, and introduce uh, some of these are like re reprises of what we've done tonight. But I'll also have what we've done tonight uh, posted on YouTube as well. Uh, some other data files and so on and so forth. Uh, let me go over the syllabus. So we know where we are there. I'll be updating it as time goes on to make things a little clearer. First of all, first, let's go over the uh, dates. I think that that's in the announcements, one place that that's located. Okay, tonight uh, we have four mandatory sessions. We did, some of us were discussing this a little bit before. Tonight's one of the four mandatory sessions that get together so we all get, and we all get on the same page here. Uh, the next one is... Uh, uh, June 21st, the Wednesday, that's going to be our first exam. It's going to cover the stuff that we covered in the first five weeks. Uh, our next uh, uh, meeting as a group will be on uh, July 12th. That's uh, also a Wednesday. That's going to be the second exam. It's non-cumulative. It's only going to cover the material since the first exam. Then we're going to have three sessions where we're going to cover some other stuff, contingency tables, hypothesis testing, analysis of variance, really cool stuff, correlation. That's there's a lot of pretty heavy weights to, uh, in information in those last three sessions. But I think that we'll have some examples, some, some exercises you can do that will help you understand that and feel comfortable with it. You'll be using a lot of that in the future. Unfortunately, the way this works is the simpler stuff is up front. 
right? So that means a lot of more complicated stuff is later on in the semester. It don't make any sense to give you the complicated stuff before you learn the basis for it. So I can't change that much. Uh, but that's the smallest segment is just those three sessions. Uh, you'll, have a, you'll have a choice. Uh, usually right after exam two, I'll ask you to decide whether you want to take a third exam or whether you want to do a poster presentation or uh, something like that. If you're timid about standing up in front of people, you can just do a paper version of it. You know, I prefer you do the presentation. It's good exercise, right? So, so, uh, uh, but you'll have a choice of those two. And uh, I, I'm making those due on either the 24th or the 20, 26th. Uh, if I can, I'm going to try and make the, the, the final on one of those two days. Uh, maybe the 24th and make the presentation the following one. So, so you have some flexibility over whether you want to, you got to get away somewhere, you know, like you have a cabin in the woods that's, you know, growing mold while you're away or something like that. So you have some flexibility, but we'll have enough time to do a little bit of a, a presentation with the, uh, 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 and get a chance to discuss what you did with the presentations or in, as in lieu of that, taking an exam instead. Yes. Yes. The third exam is also just what's in those last segments. In the last segment. Um. We'll we'll have to see. We'll have to. I'm hoping that like I'll I'll try and get everybody to take it on the same date. You know, and I'm thinking I'll make the exam. Er well, I can make the exam if I make the exam earlier. I can also have some people that really have to get away do a presentation that same day. So, so, and then the only people that'll be on here on the 26th are the people that have no lives. They have nowhere to go anyway. Okay. <laughs> so, there you go. All right. So, so we'll see about, and they can do presentations or something like that. I, if I really need to, if I really need to, I can have two versions of that exam, one for each date, and we can combine presentations on both dates too. Yes. You got your choice for the last one. You got a choice. You could choose one or the other for the third exam, for the last session. Okay. Either a presentation, a poster, and a presentation, or an exam. Let's look at the syllabus. Can you tell us about the format of the exam? Uh, form, the exams typically will be short answer and multiple choice, maybe about half the test, a little bit more than half the test. Short answer, multiple choice, some, some very simple calculations maybe. And then there'll almost always be some problems, like maybe three problems. One of the things I like to do is maybe give you four problems and let you choose which of the three that you want to do. Is it on the computer? Or is it It'll be on the computer, yes. You'll be do taking them on the computer in here, multiple choice in the whole nine yards. Uh, uh, if you need uh, uh, the problems, it may require you to use SPSS to take a chart or a graph that you've produced, copy it into Word, okay. and then upload it, upload the document to where, to where it says, you know, upload here. Yes. Uh, now, uh, they're going to be mostly, you know, like uh, 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 verbal type problems, but some of them may be just simpler versions of the larger problems. You know, things that you can work out on a calculator instead of opening uh, SPSS. Okay. So, since the week 14, you're supposed to have a lecture or a preparation session? Yes. How do you want to do it now? You know, correlation regression is a little bit of a stretch for this course. It's not going to be yeah, uh, we're going to do it. We're going to do it, but I'm not going to require you to do problems on the exam that require regression. And and I'm kind of like squeezing those things in there. I may move things around a little bit. Like somebody said the exam three would be on computer. Yeah. And there might be some correlation or regression if I get a chance to present that material before the exam. Remember, we haven't decided yet. We might wind up doing the exam on the 26th also, right? Okay. Plus, I can put the material up there on Blackboard. You guys, you can take if you if you can't stay till the last class, you can you, you'll still have uh, at least some way to review the material and learn the material. Plus, I I'll be putting up like section you know like recordings from previous classes. That you could go through as well. Okay, remember this is a hybrid class. All of the material is not just going to be brick and mortar. So Some of this material is going to be online, like these, like these lecture material for, that from Professor Waldron that I put up here. 
they're part of the they're part of the material for tonight, even though we didn't get a chance to view them here in class. So you have them to view at home. So you know, these are really important. Yes, yes. In fact, I may prefer we just do the exam on the twenty sixth anyway. And if you really got to be got to be away, do the project instead, or talk to me and I'll see if I can't rustle up another exam. Okay, if it's really an emergency and you got to get out of town. There are times when you just got to get out of town. I understand that. Okay. So, um, 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 yes. Yeah, let's talk about that right now. How many people prefer 530? One hand came up there. Two hands came up. Is it is that you can't get here before 530? Yeah. How about you? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, let's start it. How about how about compromise? We do five fifteen. I mean, you know, you know, I the problem is is that in my syllabus and and when they first started, you know, they they suggested what later or sooner? Five thirty, eight thirty. Um, that's a kind of tough for me to reconcile this. I mean, you're the only one that wants to be almost the only one that wants to be later. No, you start online at five past five. Yeah, see, the problem is, is that originally when they asked me to do the course, they told me that it was going to be 505 to, it's going to be to 750. But then when they put it on the class schedule, it says 530 to 830. So when I made up the syllabus, which I sent to everybody in the world, you know, I said 505 to, I, I, I was going under the impression it was still 505 to 730. But on the other hand, it's unfair to me to just say arbitrarily, Hey, listen, I decided it's going to be 505. People signed up for 530 to 830. So if there's someone that really feels that they have an issue with it, I would just email me personally and nobody has to know. And I will tell you guys on, by on an announcement that it's got to be 530 to 830. Now, since I'm recording this, you know, you can always catch up with the 15 minutes or something like that. And in fact, I'm not, I, I don't have a problem with maybe doing 515 to whatever time it is. Oh, the exam's going to be an issue. Yeah, you want to know something? I can also accommodate that. I can start at 5.05, but if you show up if you show up at 5.30, you can have the extra time at the other end. So it's not going to be a problem for the exams. Uh, I'm going to do the recording will be posted afterwards. Like within 24 hours, there'll be a recording of this session on YouTube. You can watch it time shift at any time you want. Right? So, so there is that option also. So like I said, if you have a real issue with starting at, say, 515, let's compromise and say 515. You have a problem with starting at 515, email me. Let me know, per, you know personally. And I'll, you know, if, the, if the course schedule says 530, I got to stick to that. But but uh, and I will and I will. But o otherwise, with the exam, I'm flexible. You can come in any time between five and five thirty and start. What's that? Yes. Oh no, it does. Remember, a lot of people may be watching on, at home, so they may not be able to get home in time to see the beginning of the lecture. So, yeah, but it's all that goes for everybody. It's recorded. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Obviously, if you're not here, I can't. You know, you're not required to be here. It's kind of tough to to you know judge class participation. So generally, what I do is you'll notice that I ask you to put up a little comment about who you are and so on and so forth. Not not to be personal, any more personal than you want to make it. Right. Just something on put post on the discussion boards why you're taking this course, what you want to get out of it, and so on and so forth. I don't really want to know why you're taking this course. I put that on there because I want you to learn how to use the discussions. I do want to know. I'm joking. But but it's also there because I want you to learn how to use the discussions board. Because if you have a question about some of the material, instead of emailing me, start a new thread on the discussions board or add to the Q&A on the discussions board, I have a question. I don't know how to do this. I'll be checking it every once in a while. But there's a good shot that some other student may want to respond to that and say, I got the same problem. Or 
this is the way I'm doing it, or something like that. So what I'll be doing, uh, you may notice that like there's a great, there's going to be a grade column next to this first thing where I ask you to, you know, introduce yourself. Uh, there's going to be a grade column that appears. So I'm asking you to to just to get for a check mark, just so I know you're using you know how to use the discussion board to post your own post and then reply to two other posts. So make three posts total. When you make three posts total, it's going to give me a little a little marker so I can go back there and change that to a check mark that you've done that. And I know you know how to use the discussions board. That's every class. And that's and no, that's just for this first class. Oh, in wait, the future, in, in the future, you got to log into Blackboard and go to the discussions board. Um, okay, uh, I, I'll bring it up in a second. You got to log into Blackboard, go to the discussions board, and then like I'll be adding things on. Like after tonight, I'll be adding on Q and A for session one. And then next one, Q&A for session two or something like that. You know, so as we go forward, you'll be able to put the questions that are relevant in, in whatever section that they're relevant to. Can we post it after Yeah, sure. Yeah, and don't post it now. Post it when you ever get a chance. Yes. Uh, on the session recordings, I'll be posting a link, a YouTube link, uh, within 24 hours. I'm sorry. Uh, there'll be both. I'll post them under announcements. I'll post them and I'll also send an email automatically when I post an announcement. And I'll also put it in the folder for session one. I'll put a link into for the recording. Yes. So homework assignments, will you be posting them every Wednesday now? Um, uh, the, yeah, there's going to be like somewhere between six and eight, depending on how we progress through the semester. And will we email them to you? Or no, you uh, you're going to you're gonna respond to them. You're going to do them on Blackboard. Okay. okay. You'll actually answer them on Blackboard. Some of them may require you to upload something that I have to grade or something like that, but you'll do them on Blackboard. Uh, some of them will automatically grade themselves. Some of them will, will wait for me to, you know, like review what you've uploaded okay. and stuff like that before they grade. It's under the assignments tab. Right now, there's nothing in there because I haven't posted anything yet. I'll probably put something up. There's no assignments tab. That's right. oh, I've, I got it hidden. The assignments tab, yeah, I have it hidden, so you can't even see the assignments tab, but there'll be an assignments tab there. Trust me. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now this is my policy on the homework. It's a little bit more liberal than the, the course the syllabus says. Okay. Uh, typically, if I post the assignment on Wednesday, I'll make it due about a week later. Right. So uh, maybe the Tuesday night or something, Tuesday end of day or something like that. As long as you try the assignment, I mean, like an honest try, not just open it and close it, but at least give it an effort. Before the due date, you can go back anytime you want and redo the assignment, right? You can do it one time, you can do it 11 times, you can do it 20 times until you get it all right. So there's no reason if you, as long as you keep up and you at least try the assignment each week, you, you follow the class, you try the assignment each week, there's no reason that you shouldn't get 30% of your grade is going to be 100%, right? So that's going to help out. You know, everybody every once in a while kind of chokes on a test. You know, don't happen. Don't happen. I know for most of you, you guys are like, you know, at this stage, don't happen too often to you because you've gotten this far, but it happens sometimes, right? So it's going to be, it's going to help to have that. And the, the participation grade is going to be based mostly on that discussion board because it's not fair to me just you know if you can make it every week and you're sitting right there yawning and i say oh she participated i remember she's the one that's joining all the time right i i and i'm i'm kidding that uh um I, I can't judge it on that because it's it's a hybrid course you're not required to make every uh visit so i really gonna have to base it on those discussion your activity on the discussion board to help each other out it's a good reason to go on those discussion boards. You get a chance to ask questions. Sometimes I'll get to them and answer them. But my experience is, is that that with 20 or 25 students, that there's always somebody looking at that thing, and there's always someone that says, "Yeah, I, I know the answer to that question." You get help almost. You get help quicker than it would be if you just have me look. Yes. Uh, and write your own. In other words, put your make your name the the topic, right. right? Write what your. I think it's on there somewhere, isn't it? There's a Q and A discussion. Yeah, board. under Q and A, uh, under the discussions board, it has I think uh, something. Uh, let me go to it right now. No, just the first class. In the future, in the future, if you have a question, put post your question there. 
Instead of emailing your question, post your question there. So then if I answer it, everybody can see the answer to the question. If another student answers it, well, that's good for you. That's good for the other student. It, it, it develops like a discussion and so on and so forth. And uh, and both of you get credit for having t- part, taken part. Um, 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 hang on a second. Let me just see if I can't find it here. Oh, I got it. I'm not showing this. A discussion board. Okay, here's the discussion board. Here's the first one here. Let's introduce ourselves. So I click on that. The, 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 uh, the, the, click on that. And some people have already added this. So if I was going to do this now myself, I'd say, I'd say, uh, 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 let's see. Uh, b- b- let me see. Uh, create a thread. Here it is up here. Create a thread. Okay. I use as the title of the thread my name. What's that? No, you don't have to post a photo. You don't have. I uh, listen in my in my online class. They all have woken up. They know the only way to communicate is through the discussions board. They're never in class, right? And they've already started. I got people's dogs on there, their kids. You wouldn't believe it. No. Yeah, I, I specifically put on here that I don't want you to be too, you know, you don't have to be personal, uh, you know, on this stuff. You can make stuff up for all I care, right? It's just, it's just that I want you, it's really for you to learn. It's really, I'm interested in why you're here, what you want to get out of it. But I'm also interested in knowing that you know how to use the discussion board. So you're not disadvantaged right off the bat, because that's going to be, since this is a hybrid course, that's an important part. Of it. Being able to access that and use it is an important part of the, uh, important part of the course. I'm not going to impose. Let me go back to the syllabus. So I can go through it quickly, and we can get out of here. We're, we're, the course, we're done already. We should be out of here by now. Let me just go through it very quickly. Okay, and if there's any part of this that is that, that doesn't make sense to you, just let me know. Come on, come back up. Yes. So you recommend that we post the license to SPSS? Yeah, SPSS. There's a few places you can go for it. There's one site called onthehub.com. O-N-T-H-E-H-U-B dot com. There's other places where you can find it. In fact, I'll put up, I think in the discussions, there's, there's, there, in the discussions there, there is a, uh, a, a thread where you can put in information. Uh, where'd you find the cheap version of it? How'd you find it? Were you able to install it? You had problems, so on and so forth. Two caveats. Number one, there, the, the, the cheapest version will be adequate for this course. It'll do everything we need for this course. The only thing that, it, and it usually costs about 40 or $45, and it's a six-month license. You got to download the program. You got to run the, the license program, and it'll work on your computer for six months. The, the, uh, there is another version that costs about 50 bucks. It's five or 10 bucks more, right? I think it's a, a, the base, one is called the base version. One is called the grad standard? version, right? It's about, what's that? Or the standard yes yeah, standard or base or whatever it is the the cheapest one is going to omit one thing it's going to omit something called logistic regression right logistic regression is a little advanced for this course however i want to at least bring it up so you know what it is i'm not going to ask you to answer any test questions on it if, if you're if you're more advanced than most of the other students you have some experience with with statistics if you want to use it for your project you're welcome to do it but the standard version, the forty dollar version, will not do it. The next one up, which is about fifty bucks, will do it. Okay. Yes. Will you pull it up online, just where we go? The one I just. Uh, this, is one just one, one, this is just one. This is just. This is one. Well. This. On the hub. Or you can just go to IBM's website too. What's that? Download it and it runs on your computer. You don't have to be connected to the internet. What's that? No, I think you can only run it, run it on one. You can check with you know they're they're very responsive. You can add, call them or you can act, you can email them and they will tell you. Yeah, yeah. Here you go. Uh, hey guys, look up for a second. Hey guys, I wanna I wanna I know some of you guys uh, want to get out of here, right? Okay, so so here you have a couple. You have the standard version. Uh, you have the grad pack version, fifty four dollars. You have the stand, the base version for Windows start forty dollars. So this version, this version has linear regression. This version does not have linear regression. Now, if you were gonna think you're gonna use it next semester, next year for Epi, you might want to buy a twelve month license instead of a six month license. 
which is not double. It's less than double. It's like night. Epidemiology. You know, words. If, if the next courses that you're going to be taking next in this fall yeah. and next semester, yeah, yeah, right. So you might you might want to buy buy the 12 month version, which is instead of a uh, double, it's like 85 dollars instead. Now make sure that you get the version for your computer. Right now, I'm looking at all the Windows versions. Right. If I click in here, I can go to the Mac versions. Right. They're all the same prices. Don't buy the wrong version. Obviously, okay. So make sure you get the right version. So let me go get back to the, the syllabus now and just go over it quickly. Okay, we decided we're, we're going to work. We're going to we're going to compromise on the on the meeting time. Make it five fifteen, unless I hear differently. Keep your eye on the announcements. Um, uh, the text you can download for free. Use as a PDF file, but you can also find places to print it. Go to that. Go to their website, which is op uh, openintro.org is the website for the textbook, openintro.org. It'll give you links to various places where you can go to get printed versions of it very cheaply. Right. You know, like a black and white version for like 10 bucks, a color version for like 25, and so on and so forth. The grading uh, is going to be the uh, three exams or uh, exam and final project, two exams and final project. 30% uh, is going to be homework. Again, uh, as long as you give it an attempt before the due date, usually a week, uh, then you're well. You're welcome to go back and uh, and uh, uh, try it again. I'm only grading the last version that you put up there. Okay. And uh, okay, lateness, absences. Uh, we have like uh, we draw in core to you for all of those things. Uh, uh, academic integrity is important to us. We're public health. You know, I mean, if you can't trust each other uh, in public health, you can do a lot of damage. Okay. Okay. Da, da, da. Uh, grades of incomplete. They hate grades of incomplete in these programs. Okay, you got you're gonna have to. We're gonna have to write up a thing where you pledge why you're gonna complete it and stuff like that. Try and get through the course. Okay, because because certainly that's the best way is to make sure you get through the course. You're putting the energy in now up front. Why waste that? Okay, and there's our our, our dates. We have to be here. The description of what we're doing, and I'll be filling in a little with more detail in the schedule here as we move forward. I may even be moving things around a little bit. So you'll see me, I think at the top here, it tells me the version of this. Uh, it's the, you don't see it here. Oh, it's at the bottom of the page. See, this this version I made up a couple of days ago, five, uh, last week, 531, right? When I put up a new version, I'll send out an announcement, you'll see that the version number will be on the, on the, on the uh, file name and on the... Uh, 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 and somewhere on the uh, uh, page itself. Okay, so if you have questions about that, let me know. Have a good night. Take care, and I'll try and get this posted. Well, okay, any more questions? Yes. Oh, I'm, that's one other thing. Every one of you guys, because that you may be taking courses here where you may handle sen sensitive data, uh, personal information for patients, for subjects, and so on and so forth, or you may be involved in projects that involves interaction with human subjects. Your, uh, there's something called an internal review board. Before you can like screw up anybody's health or psyche uh, with a study that you create, you're required to take your study to the internal review board to make sure it's safe, that you're communicating the hazards to the, to the subjects uh, 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 correctly. Uh, the internal review board says, okay, now you can do that. Now, as part of that, you're required to take a course, a certificate in ethics and human research. And uh, there's a document on here that will describe you how to do it. I can't tell you exactly how to do it now. Every year they kind of update the site a little bit. But you want to look for something that says graduate students or sub, sub, uh, or uh, subject students in uh, postdoctoral studies or something like that. And something that says human subjects research. Okay. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to see you're going to have about th between depending on how fast you read between three and six hours of reading material broken up into segments where you take a short quiz, four or five questions between each, the short modules, you can go back. You're required to get an overall average of 80% on the thing. You can go back and take the modules that you get a low score on again until you get the high, that average for all of them. And at the end, when you go through all the modules, you will uh, get, get the opportunity to print out a certificate, upload a PDF, without, file it out to, the, uh, to uh, where I put on the assignments, where you can upload it to. Or wherever the link is, I, I, I'll give you a link. Up. What's that? If you already have it, it has an expired. They used to tell me to tell you guys that if it's more than a year old, 
that you should take the refresher. And that's because, you know, a lot of times people were taking as part of an evening program. They were going to be here for three or four years. And, and the certificate lasts three or four years. So they would make them. Uh, my, uh, and lately, they've been letting me get away with just if, it, if, it, if it's got another year on it, it's okay. Upload it. If it's expired, you can go back. Don't have to take the whole thing again. You just take a refresher version of it. You'll see it on there somewhere. When and you can upload that if you said. Yes? When do we need to do this? You need to do it before I put a grade in for you. Oh, so we have the, you have the, the whole semester. Okay. Well, here we go. Now, you see what you brought up now? You're, you brought <laughs> no, that I'm ugliness sure. up. Now, let me ask you something. Do you want to do it now when we're hardly doing anything? Or do you want to do it on the last week when you got to do your poster presentation? We got an exam coming up. Do it now. Right now. Yeah, do it when you know when you got some time when we're not in the middle of some really complicated stuff, and you're backloaded with, and you got other courses or, or you know the good beach days are here. No, it just has to be done. Just be a check mark, okay? I just need to upload it. Good night, everybody. Sorry to keep. I'm sorry to keep you so late. I promise that I won't do that again.